Visual Arts Mississauga at Riverwood and the Riverwood Conservancy would like to acknowledge that the land on which we operate is the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional homeland of the Anishinaabe, Wendat, and Haudenosaunee Nations. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this place is still home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We are grateful to have the opportunity to live and work on this land. Hello, I'm Catherine, Education Program Manager and Nature Enthusiast with the Riverwood Conservancy. Art Naturally programs bring you all the best Riverwood has to offer, connection to the land, plants, and animals that make Riverwood their home. With the help from the Riverwood Conservancy's staff and guidance from the staff at Visual Arts Mississauga, Art Naturally will allow you to express the artistic inspiration that flows from nature connections. In this section of the Art Naturally program, we will explore some science concepts related to our classroom animal ambassadors, the turtles. We will also make connections with their wild native cousins, some that can be found here at Riverwood as well as elsewhere in Ontario. Hello everyone, we are so happy that you're joining us today at the Riverwood Conservancy. And I'm sure many of you have been to Riverwood before and you've gone for a hike on our beautiful trails through the forest and down into our wetland habitats. The Credit River runs right through the, the boundary of Riverwood and there are some lovely slow moving pools and shallow water there as well as some shallow ponds that make just a perfect home for animals that look something like this. I'd like to introduce you to one of our animal ambassadors today. I am here with my wonderful friend. I hope you can see my friend in our camera today. You can. This is one of our classroom pet turtles. Now, if you were to go for a walk at Riverwood, you wouldn't necessarily see a turtle that looks exactly like this. But I'd like to figure out what kind of turtle you can see here in your camera. So the first thing I'd like you to do is look at this sweet looking face of this turtle. And what I hope you'll see are some burgundy or red colored markings along the side of the turtle's face. And as well as the re with those red markings, I think you might notice that the color of this turtle's skin is this beautiful lemony yellow color. And she's also got a lot of patterning, almost like someone has taken a marker and colored on her skin with a black or a brown marker. Look at the beautiful colors. And well, she's tucked her legs in tight here, but I think you can see some of that striping. So we've got yellow skin with some red stripes. We can see her shell here. The back part of a turtle's shell is called the carapace. And we're going to turn her over so that you can see her tiny with these beautiful patterns on a sort of a soft yellow background. She has uneven colored dots and lines with one mark on almost each one of those scoops. You can see she's really wiggling. She's very strong. She has very strong back legs, which are great for crawling the out of the water of and climbing up onto logs or rocks on the warm riverbank so she can bask in some beautiful sunshine. So my friend Lou here is what we would call a red-eared slider turtle. She's a slider because when something scares her, she'll slide off of the rocks or the logs into the safety of the water. And these turtles also like to stack on top of one another. They like to hang out together. Now, red-eared slider turtles are not native to Riverwood. So if you go for a walk, you wouldn't necessarily see this species here. You would see its friend, a relative called a painted turtle. 
Now, Lou is one of our ambassadors and I'm holding her because she has a personality just like people do. Every turtle that we have here living at Riverwood has their own character traits. And Lou is sweet and friendly and she loves to eat blueberries. And she doesn't mind that I'm holding her because she's grown up as a pet turtle from the time she was tiny. If they were to be released in the environment, um, they would probably take up almost all of the food that's available and they would outcompete our native painted turtle with a flat shell and red scoots around the outside. So it's really important that we keep these pets as uh, pets and not release them into the environment. That would not be safe. And here she is. This is Lady, everyone. All of our pet turtles here in the classroom are red-eared sliders. So Lady is about as old as I am. We not, we're not 100% sure, but we think she's between 35 and 40 years old. I'm going to put Lady down because I want to show you a couple of books that I found while I was uh, while I've been doing my research over the years about turtles. So turtles can teach us a lot about um, life. And in fact, turtles have a lot of stories that they can teach us. In fact, they even have science and history written right on their backs. All turtles can tell us something about the moon. So this part on a turtle's back has a story. And there's an, an Abenaki storyteller named Joseph Brusha, who shares two stories that I'm gonna introduce you to. This is a story called 13 Moons on Turtle's Back. This is a book that combines a lot of indigenous um, information about the moons that we go through in a year, that there are 13 pieces or scoops on a turtle's back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 moons, that's how many moons there are in a year. And there's also 28 smaller scoops around the outside, which is 28 days in a full moon cycle. So the turtle has a lot of stories to share. So this is Sammy. Sammy, she's being very calm right now, but just wait, she's gonna ramp up here in a second. Sammy is a very adventurous little turtle. She loves to run around. She's very quick on the floor and she loves to swim. She's a very fast swimmer as well. As you can see, she already wants to start walking away. Now, something interesting about Sammy is that she has a really bumpy shell. Can you see how bumpy that shell is? So, so bumpy. Now, all of our turtle friends here at Riverwood are adopted. Thanks, Stephanie. Like all pets, our turtles are adopted too. And to all of you watching from your classrooms and your homes, we really want to thank you for taking time to join us today. Remember, you can invite us to visit your classroom or your community organization to extend the experience. You can just take a look at our website to find out how. And last of all, uh, we hope that you will uh, get out and enjoy the beautiful spring in your neighborhood and even coming for a walk at Riverwood to learn and explore the native habitat in our regions. Welcome to Visual Arts Mississauga. 
teachers in Peel Region can book their students an outreach workshop so they can make time for creativity and learn more about visual art. Our artist instructors can come to your classroom in person or virtually, or you can come to Visual Arts Mississauga and make art in our beautiful studios. Today you're getting a peek into our Art Naturally workshop in partnership with the Riverwood Conservancy. Students will spend half of their time outdoors in nature with the Riverwood Conservancy and then spend the rest of the time in studio making art with Visual Arts Mississauga. All of our programs are curriculum connected and today your focus is turtles. We look forward to welcoming you to Visual Arts Mississauga sometime soon. But for today, we hope you enjoy this art activity brought to you by our Art Naturally program using art supplies that you have at home. Welcome to our virtual Art Naturally workshop. We are pleased to offer you a hands-on art activity brought to you by Visual Arts Mississauga that features turtles now that you've learned more about turtles from the Riverwood Conservancy. Today, we are inspired by our environment and especially the environment that we at Visual Arts Mississauga are surrounded by at Riverwood. We are going to include three inspirations for our drawing today. We'll be exploring the elements of color, line, and texture. The materials that you will need for this workshop include printer paper, yellow, blue, green, and brown crayons or pencil crayons, a pencil and eraser, and three textures that you found in nature or at home. Please know that this is a step-by-step -step workshop, yet your teacher can pause this video at any time should you need more time for any of the steps. There are two ways to participate in this project depending on your grade and the materials you have available. I will demonstrate the crayon project first for students in FBK to grade 2, and then the pencil crayon project second for students in grade 3 to 8. Please know that any grade level can try either project or even both. These are just our suggestions. We are going to draw an object from nature, the turtle. And when you draw figures and objects from nature, they are primarily made up of organic shapes. These are things that are not geometric with firm or perfect edges. They are looser, like the shape of a leaf or the shape of a fruit. We will be starting both versions of today's projects by drawing a turtle using a pencil. We'll start by drawing the shape of the shell, adding the head, the tail, and then the front and back legs. Next, we are going to use three curved lines that follow the curved contour of the shell to divide our shell into three sections. Finally, let's finish off our drawing by drawing two curved vertical lines to divide our shell into three parts. Using your yellow crayon, shade in the whole shell with light pressure. Today we will be exploring the element of color, and most specifically we'll be looking at the color green. The color green is seen in grass, leaves, trees, and flower stems, and it makes us think of spring and summer, growth and nature. Green is a secondary color that is made up of two primary colors, yellow and blue. There are many different shades of greens. Some can be warmer and others more cool, depending on how much yellow or blue is added. You can create different values of green by adding white to make it lighter or black and gray to make it darker. Next, we're going to build towards a green shade by using a blue crayon to shade over top of the yellow. Make sure to use light pressure as you can continue to build up your color in layers. Finally, we're going to add a third layer of yellow in the same way. Take a look at the green that you've created. Do you like it? Do you want it to be a little bit cooler? Do you want it to be a little bit warmer? At this point, you can continue to layer some more yellows and more blues until you achieve the color that you're happy with. Next, we're going to shade in the head and the tail using yellow, blue, 
and some green on top. You can add some yellow to the top of the head and a bit more blue to the bottom of the head to show a lighter section and a darker section. Let's move on to the legs. Add light pressure on the front larger legs using yellow, blue, and then green. Use harder pressure with all three colors for the back legs. They're further away so they would have more shadows on them and that's why we're making them darker. The legs in the front would have more light hitting them so we'll be making them lighter. It's time to build texture. Try to find three hard textures to use for crayon rubbings. These can include items that you found on a walk or in nature or something from your home. Place the item under your drawing and use the top edge of the green crayon to rub the crayon over the paper and watch while your texture shows through. You can repeat this with the two other textures, one for each section of the shell. Here you can see that I'm using a rock and a pine cone that I found on a walk as well as some drawer liner that I found in my mom's kitchen. And finally, we're going to complete our turtle by adding a brown outline to the whole shell and body so that the turtle shape and the details are easy to see. As we play with texture today, you'll notice that we are recreating a hard turtle shell using two different techniques. We used the crayon and found hard textures from outside or inside depending on where you're working and use those to create rubbings as a way to add texture to our turtle's hard shell. You'll find that as we work with pencil crayons, we will work with varying pressures, layers of colors, and different hatching techniques to build textures using only our tools. Starting with the top section of our shell, we will be layering yellows and blues until we achieve the green that we like. To shade the middle section of our turtle using a very light layer of yellow. Be mindful of the direction of your pencil strokes. If you notice carefully, you'll see that I'm shading the entire middle section of my shell using vertical pencil strokes, moving my pencil up and down. We'll continue to build up the color in this section by adding a layer of green over our yellow color. Again, I'm making sure to maintain light pressure throughout. We can assume that our light is coming from the top and head side of the turtle. We can achieve this effect by adding yellow to the section that's closest to the head, green to the middle, and blue to the darkest section or the section that's furthest away from the head. Let's finish off this section by adding some cross hatching using horizontal and vertical curved lines that follow the contour of the turtle shell. technique called scumbling to shade in the bottom section of our shell. Let's cover the entire lower third of the turtle shell with yellow scumbles. You can think of scumbling as controlled scribbling. As with our previous section, we will be layering over our yellow scumbling with a layer of green. We can continue to add shading to our turtle shell, as we did with the previous section, adding yellow to the section closest to the head, green to the middle, and blue to the section that's farthest away from the head, implying that the light is coming from above and in front of the turtle. To the thin band that wraps around the bottom of the turtle shell, We'll use diagonal cross-hatching lines 
and cover the entire band with green and then proceed to add yellow and blue to add highlights and shadow like we did with the sections above. pencil crayon to shade in the head and tail of your turtle and then you can layer with yellow or blue to adjust the hue to your preference. Again by adding yellow near the top of the head and blue near the bottom we can suggest that the light is shining from above. be following a similar approach for the turtle's legs, yet remember that the front legs are being hit by light, meaning that we'll need to use light pressure for the front and heavy pressure for the back legs which are cast in shadow and located underneath the shell. pencil crayon to outline the shell and the outer contour lines of the turtle with heavy pressure in case we lost some of the details with our shading. You can then use brown to darken the eye and mouth and you can also add details to the feet if you wish. have some time, use your brown pencil crayon to add more light shading following each technique using the brown to make the section seem a little bit more rounded by adding this deeper color. finished. Thank you so much for joining Visual Arts Mississauga today. I hope you enjoyed this art activity and we would love to see your completed texture turtles. Please share them with us by posting photos to your school's Twitter or Instagram account and use the hashtag VAMArtReach. You can also email your photos to artreach at visualartsmississauga.com to share with us.